Hello and welcome to episode two of Episerver with Bob. I am Bob. Today we're going to just do super quick tip and we're going to be talking about multiple domains in IIS Express. So in developing Episerver sites, I actually prefer to use IIS Express. I know a lot of people like to use full IIS and that's totally fine if that's what you want. I just prefer Express and I prefer it for several reasons. Um, first, I don't have to mess around with licenses as much. Uh, I don't have to run Visual Studio as administrator, so I tend to run into fewer permissions problems. Uh, I can use a trusted connection to the database because it's basically using my credentials and I'm an administrator in my own database, and so I don't mess with connection strings as much. Uh, it can be very handy, and it just seems to work better when debugging. Sometimes you have to go full IIS, and I do that as well, but as much as I can, when working locally, I just prefer Express. The downside to Express is that it doesn't directly support multiple domains. The only thing you can bind to it is localhost, but you can bind localhost at multiple port numbers to IIS Express, and in that sense you can kind of fake domains. I'm going to show you how to do that. So in my project folder, the folder with the solution, there will be a .vs folder. If I go into that VS folder, there will be another folder. This one is called Alloy Demo because that's the name of the solution. I will open that up. Within that, there will be a config folder, and then within the config folder is an application host.config. Application host.config is basically an IIS configuration folder, and is basically the same for full IIS versus IIS Express. So what I can do is scroll down through this file looking for, here it is, the sites node, and there will be a child of the sites node for your project. In this case, it is Alloy. You can see it's the project name is Alloy, so this is the site I want to change. And right here is the important bit, the bindings. There is one binding for localhost for port 53430. In fact, if I open up IS Express here, you can see it's listed as an application, but there's that port number. Now, I actually don't want IS Express running right now. I have to restart it when I make this change anyway, so I'm just going to go ahead and kill it. And then I'm going to duplicate this binding and add one to the port number. So now I've got two HTTP bindings, one for ending in 30 and one in ending 31. Now what I can do is relaunch the site. I close that. And I can when I check IS Express here, now I see both bindings showing up in the applications. Now the nice thing about this is that I now have two ports pointing at the same application, but Episerver can treat them as two different domains. So I'm going to jump into the admin here and go to config, manage websites, let's go to the alloy site, and what I'm going to do is add a binding for the 3.1 uh, domain, and I'm going to set that culture to Swedish, and I'll make that the primary, and I will save. So I have the site running here. I mean, I have a tab open on the Swedish version of the website. It's still on the old port because I haven't refreshed the page. If I refresh, and I'm still using the language identifier here, but if I click on Start to go back to the home page, because that's my primary for Swedish, it now takes me to the new domain. So I have English running on 30 and Swedish running on 31. And so you can do this uh, not only for languages, but also for binding multi-tenant applications. If you've got another site inside your application, you can just give it a new port number and, and bind to that. Uh, there's basically no limit to how many port numbers you can have. I mean, other than your sanity as you scroll through this tiny little list here, or you know the number of port numbers available on your computer. But uh, Now, the impression I get from the official documentation is that this isn't exactly a supported approach, but I've been using this method for a number of years. It's always worked well for me. It's not maybe not ideal, but it works. And uh, yeah, I guess if something goes wrong, the worst case scenario is I'll switch to full IIS instead. Anyway, uh, I hope this was helpful and I appreciate you watching and maybe I'll see you next time.